Hey guys, today I'll be making an, an, an unboxing video of the MSI Modern 14 so, and do some benchmarks on it. Okay, let's go to it. Okay, upon uh, opening the first box, you get a pretty sleek box inside. Okay, let's open the box inside. Okay, this is the box inside. Let's open ship it the charger. Sadly, this laptop doesn't have USB-C charging, which is probably the price is okay. I got it for 650 AUD. There's a lab, there's a chart, there's a manual for it, and this is the laptop. Yeah, it's very sleek. The design is good as well. Let's open. Yeah, it's a good design. <laughs> okay, let's see if power's on. Nope, it's dead. <laughs> okay, I'll be back once I power's on. Okay, guys, I've been using this laptop for a bit over a month now. And I'll show, show you my results and how it's running. Okay, for I ran first, what do you call this thing? It's user benchmark. And as you can see here, gaming wise, this thing is not doing well. It's a tree trunk. But that makes sense. This is using integrated graphics, which is, which is basically the Intel HD 620, which is really bad for gaming. But for CPU-wise, it's weighted pretty good. It's weighted as a battle cruiser. Even though when you use it, actually, the CPU is actually not really fast. It's actually quite slow. It regularly hits like 100% in Windows updates. Like even though the benchmark results share similar to like an i7 8th gen, but the performance you see in real life is like nowhere near. And this is the Geekbench store score. So you had a single core score of 878 and a multi score multi-core score of 1502 it's not amazing it's like yeah 8th gen i7 or 7th gen i7 laptop cpu but it performs nowhere near as good and then it has a graphic score of 4766 that's pretty bad already i will show you some games for instance i'll show you fortnite to begin with oh yeah while fortnite's loading i'll show you some issues with this laptop the keyboard is actually okay, except for the function key, FN and control. Like, there's no FN on the left side, it's switched onto the right side, but that doesn't really bother me. This display has some issues. See this gap? I'm not sure you can see it or not right now. Wait for the screen to become non-black, okay. See this gap in between the screen and the hinge? That place, particles get stuck in it, like, and you can't get it out, it's like that. And you will always see a particle, like, Thus poking out from it, so it sometimes gets quite annoying. But if you can overlook it, it's okay. It's not really super distracting, but sometimes you actually notice it and it's very annoying. This hinge you can actually open with one hand. I'll show you afterwards. The battery life is not that great, it's just like an average laptop. I'm not sure what average means for me. It doesn't Definitely you can't just go on full day of uni without a charger, you definitely need one. But for like high school, school, that you're good with it. I'll show you Fortnite Save the World, actually Battle Royale. This is not performance mode, this is like normal normal mode. Like performance mode you literally can't play. You get a disadvantage in playing games anyways. Okay, I'll show you guys the settings I'm using. I'm on 3D resolution of 76% and everything else on lowest possible. Okay. I'll jump into a match and show you guys. Okay, I've just loaded in. You guys can see this graphics. I'm on. Let me pull a bit closer. Okay, I'm, you guys can't see it, but the FPS is on like 15 right now. Oh, it's lagging now. <laughs> okay, it's on. It's on five. Wow, I just loaded. Oh, look at that. Oh, right, this thing is only using a single channel RAM, so it loads really slowly. I'm not using a mouse right now, I'm using a touchpad, so it might not be good. 
as you can see, this game is this what I call it. This laptop is not suited for playing Fortnite, even Fortnite. Oh, this lag. <laughs> Like, you know the ping? I feel like it's not coming from my Wi-Fi, it's actually coming from the hard drive and RAM not catching up. Or the CPU not working hard enough, or GPU. Yep, so it's not suitable for playing Fortnite, you can see it's really laggy. It averages around 20 FPS. But it has a lot of stutters, so it's not, not good at all. Like, it ranges from 5 to 22 FPS, that's the range it says. So it's not okay. So next game I'm gonna test is Subnautica below zero though. Oh yeah. On a side note, just before I launch Subnautica, this laptop has some storage, weird storage issues. Like all I have installed is Fortnite, which is 30 gigabytes, and Subnautica around 10, and all the other games, which is like five gigabytes total. And somehow I'm on 89 gigabytes left. By my calculations, I should have at least like what do you call 140 left or something. I'm not sure where it went. Okay, let's launch Subnautica. Okay, I've loaded into Subnautica. This thing took a long time to load, it took like two whole minutes. The FPS actually looks fine. But it has micro stutters. Like when you open the door or something. Okay, maybe not. You can tell it's the FPS definitely not high. I feel it's like I feel like it's around 20 FPS. Like Subnautica, I wouldn't say it's actually playable. Like 20 FPS is not really good. Mostly we can get into scenes where there's a lot of action. But generally it's actually, this laptop can play like basic games like Terraria. I tried GDA San Andreas. It gets around, yeah it gets actually 60 FPS, but you have to put it in like low settings, to medium. You can't put it anywhere high. But that's 1080p though. This is 1080p, the lower settings. Normally, it's like this. It lags whenever you use this search this search thing. Like what do you call it? This search for any ore, and then this pops up, and then all the ores pop up in this game. It lags really badly, so it's not really useful for gaming. This laptop has a really good keyboard. The feeling and the size of it is nice. This touchpad, I wouldn't really say it's that nice, but it's usable. And the, and the build of the body is actually pretty good as well. It's the whole thing is made of aluminum. But it does feel cold during winter though. This thing does have pretty good Wi-Fi, as you can see here. Uh, maybe not. My, my home Wi-Fi is pretty slow right now. But this thing has, has decent Wi-Fi, the signal it receives is actually pretty good. Like all the laptops I have only gets like 150, this thing gets 200 above. Even though my phone normally picks up like 300. Even though, yeah, the upload speed on my home Wi-Fi is really bad for some reason. I'm not sure why. Oh god. Okay, I'll show you that this lid is actually openable by one hand. Look at this. That's one hand. I'm not sure if that's a good feature or not. And, oh yeah, talking about upgradeability, I did open this laptop. The only thing you can upgrade is this SSD or RAM. And that RAM, there's only a one channel of RAM, so you, you're stuck with single channel RAM. And that's a pretty bad thing. It's actually really slow because of that. It has one 8 gig stick inside and one 256 NVMe. I think it's NVMe or M.2 SSD. That's about the only thing you can upgrade inside. There's nothing else. And it does have a factory seal thing. I'm not sure that that's allowed or not. I did break it though. Okay. And then I realized I can't upgrade anything. Like, I don't feel like putting a 16 gigabyte RAM thing in an i3 processor is a good idea. So I didn't do that. Yeah, I bought this laptop for 650 Australian dollars. That's like less than 500 USD. So it's actually a pretty good deal. The build quality is amazing, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, the processor and RAM for this price is actually pretty good. That's in Australia wise. But if you're in the US, you can even easily get like a Ryzen 5 4500U laptop for the same price. So, <laughs> yeah, 